Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm introducing you to a new project for the shop. Uh, this project, a little bit unexpected, kind of came in, and uh, things have kind of developed over it over the last week or two, that is going to cause this project to kind of bump its way up in my pecking order as to what's going to be done uh, next. So uh, let me give you a little bit of background on this and this so why we're kind of taking a, putting a little bit of higher priority on it. So number one, this is a bandsaw. Uh, it's a 48 inch bandsaw. The wheels are 48 inches in diameter, which in the bandsaw world is huge. Uh, usually about the largest bandsaw you see is a 36 inch. I've got a 36 inch crescent in my shop back there and that's a big bandsaw. This is a huge bandsaw. And outside of going to something like a bandsaw mill, this is about the biggest ones that were, were built. It was made by the J.A. Fay and Company out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, believe that it was made in the late 1800s based on some evidence that I have dug up around a couple places. I won't go into all of that. But uh, I actually have a catalog from the late 1800s that shows uh, this machine in it. And uh, in fact, here's a cut from that catalog showing it. And one thing you'll notice is that that bottom wheel, it is such a large diameter wheel that in order to be able to stand on the floor and use the table of this, the wheel actually has to go beneath the floor. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big bandsaw. Uh, when I found it, it was actually up on some cribbing that allowed that wheel to stay on there. Uh, but anyway, that's the way, way. The way that it was done originally was just had that wheel tucked down into the floor beneath it. Now, uh, I found this bandsaw. Uh, actually, I was contacted by a gentleman over in Waycross, Georgia, that bought a piece of property, had a shop out back. It actually used to be an old airplane hangar from the 1940s that the previous owner had moved there. He uh, was notorious about going to auctions and buying junk. And there was a bunch of junk in this uh, building, uh, including a bunch of machines that we feel like were all acquired at the, approximately the same time. Um, a lot of the machinery that was in there, almost all the machinery that was in there, was what I would call junk. And mainly because it just had so many parts and pieces missing or broken on it that it would be, I'm not going to say impossible to restore, but it would not have been practical to do restorations on. Uh, one of the exceptions in there was this bandsaw. And when I first saw it, it was all put together. I took this apart. We had to take it apart to move it. More on that in a minute. But... Um, we believe that all the machines that are in this shop came from uh, Rice Yard. Rice Yard is a railroad yard in Waycross, Georgia. It's only a couple of miles from the shop where we found this stuff at. And uh, it is a major uh, railroad yard that, in, that serves the eastern United States. It's currently owned by CSX. Back in the day, it was owned by the Atlantic Coastline Railroad. And uh, of course, Atlantic Coastline merged, mergers, mergers over the years. It's now what is, comes under the conglomeration of CSX. Still operational. Don't know a lot of the history about Rice Yard. I actually tried to look up when it was founded. I know it was founded probably in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, the gentleman that kind of started that railroad industry down there kind of started in the 1880s, uh, the plant system. Uh, and I think it was Henry Plant was kind of the guy that kind of started all that railroading in that area. And it dates from the 1880s. I think that's probably about when what became Rice Yard was kind of established. And I believe that this bandsaw was probably part of that original complex of machines down there, and it was probably used for doing car work. Uh, in addition to working on locomotives, they had to keep the railroad cars, which a lot of that stuff was made by, in, by, in wood back in those days. So um, anyway, that's kind of the history I know. Now, when I found this stuff or I was contacted about it, I went over, I actually put a post up on my Facebook page, said anybody's interested in this saw, contact me, I'll hook you up with the owner. And I was kind of planning on staying out of it, but uh, several of you guys did reach out to me and I, as promised, I connected with the owner. And eventually a deal was made uh, between a gentleman named Jimmy Duresta uh, and uh, the owner. Now, I mean, you guys may know who Jimmy Dress is because he is a major YouTuber out there. Really huge channel, does all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, he does a lot of bandsaw work. When he saw this, he said he had to have it. Jimmy's a friend of mine. We've been friends for a long time. I, I know him personally. Uh, he sent me a message, says, I want the saw. 
I hooked him up with the owner. They worked out a deal. He purchased the saw. Uh, and then he asked me if I could help go get it retrieved. Since he lives up in the New York area, I said, sure, glad to do it. So uh, me and a friend of mine, Andy Knowlton, Andy's actually been on my YouTube channel in the past. He used to live here in Tifton area. He actually lives over near Waycross now where this stuff was at. I reached out to him. He came over and spent the day helping me get the stuff loaded up. It was a job loading it up. I didn't get any video footage that day. It took all day long. We had some uh, mechanical problems in the equipment we were using. Long story, I'm not gonna get into. But at the end of the day, we got the band saws and we got them moved here and that's now in my shop and uh, helping Jimmy out. I told him, hey, why don't I restore it for you before we send it up? I think it'd be a fun little video series and uh, honestly, selfishly, uh, doing a collaboration with uh, Jimmy, I think will help my channel because Jimmy's again a much larger channel than what I have. So uh, hopefully that'll help pick up some new viewers uh, doing this uh, project uh, for Jimmy. And that's kind of my selfish reason for volunteering to do this, but also because I think it'll be a fun project. All in all, the saw doesn't appear to be in terrible condition. Uh, I mean, the wheels are turning, it's got Babbitt bearings on it, the bottom wheel was turning great. We had to take the bottom wheel off and the table and stuff off, the stuff you see here, in order to move it. So that's the reason it's separate, but it was all together and for the most part, it was complete. And for the most part, I think we could have put a motor on it and probably ran it. Uh, but it is in bad need of some TLC and we are gonna do a full blown restoration on this project. So anyway, there's a quick introduction, that wasn't too quick, uh, but there is an introduction to this project. My first step is I need to get this thing stripped down to the main casting so that we can start getting all the old paint and rust cleaned off of this, get that uh, prepped for painting, get it painted, and then that will become the, the foundation that will start rebuilding this saw. Uh, notice it's got wooden rims on the wheel. So you got steel spokes, but the, the rims are, are steam bent oak. I believe that's oak, it may be ash. Looks like oak though. Uh, of course, has a rubber tire on the outside. We'll have to pull that off and repair it. It's just falling apart. Uh, I've already talked to the guys at Woodworkers Tool Works and they said they can get me tires for this thing. So anyway, so we got a lot of work in front of us. Let's get started getting her stripped down so that we can really get started in earnest on fixing her up. So first thing I want to do is get this wheel, this top wheel off. Since we've already got the bottom ones off, uh, kind of start from the top and work down. There's some bearing caps. These are Babbitt bearings up here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this off. Uh, it's just a couple of bolts holding those one on this side on. There's two bearing caps, one on the front and one in the back. Uh, looks like they got, well, can't tell how many screws it's got right now. Let's see. There's that one. There is one more right here. Looks like there's only three. It's an odd bearing cap. There must be some clearance issues on the other side. Or they would have put one over there. Go ahead and pull that bearing cap out. Looks like they have, were running grease in these Babbitt bearings instead of oil, which is kind of a no-no, but uh, the shaft looks to be in good shape. Um, we'll have to decide at some point whether this needs new Babbitt bearings or not. That bearing's out of the way. Before we pull this wheel off, I want to get a, the gantry on here. So that I got that cap out of the way, we can put this strap on here. that and let's get this uh, back bearing cap off. And that bearing cap comes off as well and that bearing looks to be in pretty good condition and I don't see the, the same level of grease as I saw on the other side. All right, let me get this stuff out of the way. All right, and should be able to just kind of lift this wheel up, come out with it. 
across the gasket there, no big deal. Shim, rather. All right, got that wheel off and out of the way. Disconnect it here and we'll continue disassembling. So this uh, whole barren here, it, it pivots. So you got an adjustment in the front. This adjusts the tracking of the blade by tilting the, it back and forward. And there's a pin through here that that's pivoting on. I've already started kind of knocking that pin out. And I'm going to get this bolt out right here. I think I can get it out by hand. There we go. I should be able to knock that pin on out the rest of the way now. I should. Yeah. All right, let me get these tools out of the way and we're gonna to try to get that out. I'm trying to decide if I wanna use the gantry for this, but I'm gonna to have to finagle it out of there. I don't think I'm gonna be able to use the gantry. All right, there we go. Now we'll come out sideways. All right, so I took the hand wheel down here and we cranked this all the way up so that this uh, plate is really, the screw's disengaged from it. Now I want to take this plate off the front where we can just get this out. So uh, find the right uh, find the right sockets here. We'll go ahead and get these out. That one's bent. side off. Okay. So it should come out of there. I might might get the gantry and pick up on that. I don't want to have to tote it down the ladder. All right, that should come right up. There it comes. I still got my Adjusting rod here with it though. What's going on with that? There it comes. There we go. All right, coming down with it. I don't know if you can see uh, all those little spiders running around there, but uh, we're going to fix that. So the next thing I want to try to do is get this uh, hand wheel off the bottom so that we can get this screw out. And I think we'll pretty much have all this disassembled. So there's just one set screw on this. It's a three eighths, looks like. Yep. So I'm going to loosen that up and uh, see if we can get this uh, handle off, hand wheel off. Make sure I got it good and loose. In fact, I think I'm gonna take that set screw all the way out just in case they got that uh, shaft drilled on the inside where it's going up into it. Probably not, but you never know. And that'll make it a pain to get off. So we'll play it on the safe side. Plus, if I take it completely off, I can squirt some penetrating oil up in there, which will help get some oil down inside of that to loosen it up and get it off of there. 
also, you probably can't see it, but the shaft is sticking out a little proud down here on the bottom. I'm just going to take a wire wheel and quickly hit that, knock any rust or anything off. Again, that should kind of help it uh, come off. I'm going to hit her with some penetrating oil. This is a CRC product called Knocker Loose, uh, which I got turned on to a couple of years ago. And I really like it. It has uh, been real happy with it. So uh, we'll put a little bit of that on there. It'll kind of, and I'm going to give that a few minutes to let it kind of creep a little bit and uh, get down in there. And we'll see if we can get this. One thing I will note is up here, you see this little boss right here? There is a piece of metal back here in the back, and it's a lever that goes in here, and there's a whole spring mechanism. It's actually not hooked up right now, but what that does is it, there's a weight, a counterweight, and it pushes up on this whole assembly, and it just kind of helps keep tension on the blade uh, in addition to what you do by moving it up. You just got, always got a little bit of upward tension on there, so even if you something happens and bounces, it's just constantly putting upward pressure on there. So when I'm push, pushing this off the bottom, I'm gonna have to make sure we get all the way down. All right, we'll let that sit for a few minutes to see if we can get that out. All right, I'm gonna come over here. I got a brass punch and let's see if we can get this thing moving down. All right, it has moved. I can see a, it's actually got a shoulder up in there, but it's moved maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Should just lift out of here now. There we go. And while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. This is just the pivot pin for that lever that's up in here that we were talking about a while ago. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. There we go. And that should come right out the back. And you can see this lever kind of has a hole in the back. There's a place here where a rod goes down to another level before that has a uh, counterweight on it. But we can get that out. And with that, I think we got everything pretty much disassembled in this upper frame. The only thing left in here is this uh, nest. <laughs> Put that in the garbage. Dirt daubers. All right. So coming around over to the front now, we've got this uh, piece here that captures this uh, arm that you can adjust up and down. Your guide is down here. So this basically is where you adjust the height of your area, your blade that you're going to cut with. And let's see if we can get these out. should come out. Hmm. Get one of my lead hammers here. Here's where that bar just came out and on the very front of this saw there's this piece here there's it's dovetailed in there's ways on the top and there's an adjustment screw here on the side to adjust this up and down i'm not exactly sure uh, why you would need that because you can move the 
whole thing up and down. I don't know why you would need this fine adjustment here or whatever it is, but it's here. This is all rusted up. It's, it's, I can turn it a little bit, but it's not really moving very much. So what I want to do is kind of get the rust cleaned up off of that with a wire wheel and see if I can just screw this all the way up and off. So I'm going to get in here with a wire wheel and just clean that up real quick. Trying to get any crud out up here on the top and get some penetrating oil going down in here. And also get some going down here. See if I can get some leverage on this uh, hand wheel down here. Let's see, I think I need to go one more. Oh yeah. All right, let me clean that up, uh, the back side up there. It's not turning too bad, but I need the leverage of this wrench to turn it. Take it all the way to the top. All right, we are all the way up. We can slide this off the rest of the way. There we go. So next, I wanna get this knob off the bottom so that we can pull that out. And there is a tapered pin in there. It's pretty easy to tell. This is the small end of the pin. That's the large end of the pin. So let me grab a hammer and a punch. We'll uh, see if we can knock it out right there. It moved. Get a little bit smaller punch that'll go through that hole. There we go. Let's see if that'll come off. There we are. And now that should just come right out the top here. Get a little persuasion. There we go. And I'm just going to put this back together. Pin back in there for safekeeping. And we'll put that up. Just thought I'd show this real quick. I've been looking at this machine and if you look up underneath, there was a tag right here. I think this was a serial number tag that unfortunately has been removed. But if you look up underneath it, it's, it's kind of black in color. And then you got this green on the outside. My initial uh, thought was, was this machine was originally black and then it was painted green at some point in time. but. I noticed when I was working over here, you can see the remains of a little gold decal right here. And that is on top of the green paint. So that's kind of got me second guessing myself as to what the original color was. Was it black or was it green? Uh, this green would be very typical of a, a Victorian era machine, such as this one built in the late 1890s. So uh, I'm kind of leaning toward this green as being the original color. Now, as for this decal, if anybody out there has an example of what this decal was, let me know because I can get one recreated if I have a good picture. All I can kind of see is a little bit of the a bad shaped over here. On this side, it's, it's in pretty bad shape. You can't read it or anything, uh, but I would love to be able to recreate that. Uh, I could get my buddy Ryan Sellers, who does little water slide decals like this to recreate that if I can come up with something. So let you sluice out there, see if you can help me out there. So we're moving down and uh, this part here is what the table mounted to. And you can see we have a, a trunnion built in here that allowed this table where you could tilt it. 
So there's a couple of screws on the other side. I'm hoping I can loosen it up and this will pop right out. It's not too badly rusted into place. But before I go too far, we're going to give it a good coating of uh, penetrating oil. Get it all in there real good. here. Found the right socket for that. Go ahead and pull it out. There we go. And we got this guide. There's a piece of metal in here that this just pivots on. We got a set screw up on the bottom. I'm going to take my wire wheel and try to knock some of that rust off of that shaft so we can slide it off. Uh, screw out here. There we go. Hit her with the knocker loose. There we go. And she came right off. Good deal. Only a few more pieces left. We're over on the back side of the machine and there's this bracket that holds this brush on. I can actually pull that out with my fingers. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. Got an, it was originally also attached right there. I think we loosened that up and we pulled that bottom wheel off. This uh, brush would have gone up against the wheel and just kept uh, any, anything from getting on it. So I think this is the last piece really to come off of this saw, but this is a guard. Believe it or not, they had a guard on this back in the day. Uh, most of these machines from this era did not have guards. And I believe that's original. So a couple of set screws in here holding this in place. And I believe that's gonna come off without having to bang on it. Let's see. Got to get them kind of coming out together. There it comes. So I think I am going to go ahead and like pull these little um, bolts and stuff. I think this had something to do with this auxiliary table um, that we took off and we had to move it. Let's find the right socket for it. I believe it's this one right here. There we go. Let's see if I can get those out. Put a little penetrating oil on them. I think those are just threaded in there. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Oh yeah, that didn't take much at all. The ease in which this stuff is coming apart is a good sign that even though it was set up for a lot of years, I think it was mostly under shelter and not in too bad shape.
All right. Well, I think we've pretty much got most everything taken off that I want to take off. Uh, maybe a few little bolts here and there that are still in. I'll get those in a minute, but no big deal. Uh, but all in all, I think we're ready for the next step with this. And what that will be is we got to get this thing stripped clean. My game plan, usually when I do something like this, you know, I've got it stripped down. Uh, we're going to take it outside and I will probably spray it down with a really good uh, paint remover that will bubble this paint off as much as possible. And then I'll come in here with a pressure washer uh, with a turbo tip on it and try to knock as much of that stuff off as I can. Um, we're not going to hurt anything by, by pressure washing this machine at this stage. Uh, so that's kind of the next step. I probably won't show that on camera. It's just messy to have the cameras out there while I'm doing that. Uh, but it tends to work pretty good. So like I said, we'll, uh, we'll put some paint stripper on it, pressure wash it. And then after that, uh, my buddy Brock uh, will come in here and attack it with the wire wheel and get all that old stuff off and then we can start looking at what we need to do next. Probably gonna have to put some body filler in this in some places, that's my guess. Usually on old castings like this, they're not perfect. So uh, we'll do a little bit of cosmetic work and uh, then paint it. Uh, I'm gonna get up with Jimmy Duresta and see what he wants to do about color. I had previously had just uh, text messaging back and forth or some kind of messaging back and forth asking about color. He didn't seem like he had a big preference one way or the other. Uh, but like I said, I, I feel pretty good that this uh, green is probably original. So if he doesn't have a problem with that, uh, we may go back to that kind of greenish color uh, just to kind of keep it as close to the original as possible. If not, probably go with black. And I don't think you can go wrong with uh, uh, black on an old machine of this vintage. Most of them were probably painted that color. So there we go. Guys, uh, that's going to be a wrap. As always, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Hit that bell icon to get notifications of new videos being posted to the site here. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.